Before I get started with this video, I want it to be made very clear and understand that Brandon Sanderson, as a human being, as an individual in both the media and at home, seems to be, by all accounts, a very good man. A very upstanding individual with a level head, a congenial attitude, and really exemplifies himself as a true leader in the field of fantasy. But I'm not. I'm an asshole. And frankly, for the sake of this particular video in response to the article we're going to talk about, I'm going to be the asshole that Brandon Sanderson can't be. It was inevitable as the day is long that at some point Brandon Sanderson probably are one of our most prolific and frankly uh, at the moment the most popular fantasy author that we have in the field of fantasy writing was going to start gaining a t mainstream attention or at the very least attention from uh, more mainstream considered outlets. Such is the case of this Wired article that came out the day before this video in which a, a Wired uh, journalist traveled to his home state of Utah, spent a week with Brandon Sanderson, and then decided after about five months and a lackluster effort that they just didn't give enough of a shit to write up anything compelling about the guy. Sanderson's an affable character. I mean, if you watch his videos, it's pretty clear where he comes from. The motherfucker loves writing. He loves writing fantasy stories. He wrote four spare fantasy novels in his spare time from writing his big two uh, required fantasy novels for his publisher. He's even-tempered, he, he dresses as if he doesn't care to impress anybody, and he seems utterly unconcerned with trying to gain favor with mainstream media and Hollywood in general to kind of elevate his profile. And by all accounts, he's a pretty decent writer. Now, in full disclosure, I haven't read any of his books, not for any ma malicious reason more than I just haven't gotten around to it. And eventually, I probably will, and I don't doubt that he's uh, a good writer in his own right. But he's not really the writer in question. The writer in question is the writer of this article, which goes out of his way to try and find things wrong with Brandon Sanderson. To which... Old Brando Sando just doesn't give him anything to write about. He's an ordinary guy. He wakes up, he writes a little, spends some time with his family, writes a little more, attends a convention in uh, near his town that's for just his own characters and his own world. He has adamant fans, and that's something every writer should have, something every writer dreams about having, and he's writing that uh, particular wave. The journalist in question for uh, Wired comes from San Francisco and seems to find the quaint way of living that he has with his friends and his family and uh, giving work to his extended family and uh, people that he's known for a long time uh, doesn't seems to be a foreign concept to somebody from a, such an enlightened place as San Francisco. And I'm sure to the writer of the article from San Francisco, a place where you can brazenly steal without the police arresting you, take a shit in the middle of the street and leave drug needles lying around school, around school pavements for uh, kids to see and accidentally step on, that this quaint Middletown America faith-based Mormon fantasy uh, writer must seem like an alien creature from another planet. The first problem with the article is that the journalist, from the onset, seems to uh, regard all of his fa all of Sanderson's fame and everything involved with him with a tongue-in-cheek level of disinterest. This is the kind of vapid article that reeks of the journalist just didn't give a shit with the assignment he was given. It goes out of his way to mention the fact that nobody uh, that he knows in his particular geek circle knows who Sanderson is. Sanderson's important enough to make tens of millions of dollars a year and have one of the mo have the most successful Kickstarter in history, but the the author of this particular piece just couldn't be bothered enough to gin up the interest to find out why. And when he did end up going to Sanderson's house, what he found was just so uninteresting to him that he struggled for five fucking months to come up with anything about this. A failing so profound that the uh, that the journalist admits in the article they fed all this shit through AI just to write 4,000 words. I could shit 4,000 words in my sleep. I could write 4,000 word articles on the shitter on my phone. But this guy had to have the help of an AI to construct this article. And believe me, a lot of it really reads that way. You're also gobsmacked by the fact that this guy seems to find the fact that 
Sanderson is so popular and makes so much money, just absolutely incredulous and telling himself he couldn't possibly be that good of a writer too. And he has the balls to say this to Brandon's face in front of his wife. It's a good thing that Brandon Sanderson has such a sense of humor and a self-deprecating uh, way of looking at himself that he actually agrees, just probably off the cuff. Now, I give credit to Brandon. That would probably be my response, too. I don't think very highly of myself. A self-deprecating sense of humor does help insulate yourself from things like imposter syndrome and, you know, overly hard, being hurt by overly harsh criticism. Me, personally, I just assume my writing sucks, and I hope someone enjoys it. I could go through this article and read it piece by piece, but really, it's nothing more than a vapid, vacuous attempt by a journalist to write a story on something he was obviously not interested in and didn't understand by the time he was done studying him. How you can spend a week with somebody who is one of the most prolific fantasy writers of the modern era and come away with 4,000 words of 90% nothing is astounding to me, and it speaks to either a level of failure on the part of the journalist or a complete disinterest in wanting to just write a passive-aggressive hit piece. And for those of you who are out there saying, well, we don't want to signal boost this uh, article because then it gets a whole bunch of attention, I will remind you that overwhelming negative attention, which this article is getting for Wired, is not necessarily good press. See what happened with the Sonic movie, the first one, with the original ugly Sonic design where the overwhelming negative uh, feedback from people ended up making them change the movie to a better look. And while most of these outlets are a bunch of clickbait, rage generating, headline generating uh, sorts of outlets that are va that are they're just as vacuous as can be, and frankly, most of them deserve to go under at this point. Looking at you here, Kotaku. Wired at least had some kind of some kind of semblance of being a bit of a bridge between mainstream America and the tech industry world. But with journalists like this, it sure doesn't feel that way. My suggestion, Wired, next time you want to uh, interview somebody, and they, maybe you hire a journalist who actually takes an interest in these kinds of things. Someone with at least passing knowledge of what uh, Brandon Sanderson has. This clown had five months to come up with a story about the most prolific uh, fantasy author in uh, modern day. And it's filled with such gems as going to a theme park and noting the uh, level of decay it, it has to it. And sitting in a home, in Brandon's home theater watching a musical with Hugh Jackman that you didn't like and openly admitting you cried about it. Real Pulitzer Prize winning material there. And Brandon, being the high-class individual that he is, made a response to the article on Reddit, which, holy shit, how a wholesome guy like that spends his time on a cesspit like Reddit is beyond me. And Brandon, of course, as always, understood the assignment. He understood the article was generating all of the negative attention for Wired, and that the journalist in question was the one who was getting the heat for it. He didn't have to go scorched earth on the journalist. His fans are doing that for him and quite frankly rightfully so in my opinion brandon took the high road in his response as is his modus operandi and frankly good for him brandon you're a good dude me i'm not a good dude i'm an ex-construction worker turned uh, fantasy author turned struggle bus tier youtuber i've got a chip on my shoulder and i'm a fucking asshole at times People like to say, if you just get, if you go down to someone's level, you just end, both end up with dirt on you. Well, sometimes the dogs need to jump into the pit and remind the pigs that live in the filth why they're there to begin with. This article almost made me buy the Mistborn trilogy out of pure spite. Fortunately, Brandon Sanderson is in a place that, frankly, nobody can really touch. He has so many fans that are so adamant about his work, he could scrap everything he works on now, start over from scratch with a new fantasy series, and his fans would completely follow him over there. He doesn't need a publisher. He could be completely self-published, and he'd be the biggest author in the world. He loves writing. He loves telling stories. It's, frankly, hard to hate this guy. But you got to go out of your way to actually hate Brandon Sanderson. And in the case of this particular journalist, he went out of his way to find things to not like about Brandon Sanderson. It speaks to the journalist's projection of their own failure in their own life to not achieve something quite as meaningful anywhere near as what Sanderson's achieved. He even likes to point out in the article that uh, Sanderson writes at something of a sixth grade reading level, which... So what if people, obviously people like it, 
So what do you care uh, what his uh, reading level is at? I'm not saying Brando needs a nice uh, write-up that glows and, and puts him on a pedestal and kisses his ass or anything like that. But this 4,000 word article is stretching to find anything to kind of bring attention to why Brandon's uh, as popular as he is. To the extent that the auth, that the journalist goes out of his way to make up stuff that seems like a flaw is because Brandon wasn't flawed enough and didn't give him anything to work with as a means to tear him down. He seems too good to be true, so the journalist thinks it must be so. There's something wrong with his audience. There's something wrong with his religion and faith, which he also passively aggressively attacks in the article. Truth is, Sanderson's in a good place in life and in his career, and he's got a lot more ahead of him if he uh, keeps himself good and healthy. And this journalist is going to go on to be making more vapid AI-generated articles that no one reads and no one interacts with. I hope he enjoys this 15 seconds of rancid fame that he brought heaped onto his head because it's all downhill from here, buddy. But that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'll have links to the article and Brandon's response in the description. I thank you for sticking around this long. I'm author John A. Douglas. I'll see you next time.